Hey, it's Tom, and in this week's episode, uh, I'm back in the shop, and we're going to work on building some furniture. Uh, just a fair warning, this uh, is a multi-part uh, series, um, mainly because I've only been back for a little bit of time, we had a big storm, I'm lazy, all those good things. Uh, no, uh, so basically, this week's video, we'll do... We'll look at the design of the uh, furniture. It's a set of tables that we're making, a uh, coffee table and uh, matching end tables. Uh, so we'll look at the design. We'll do that in Fusion 360. And then we'll, uh, I'll speed through, but I've done all the plasma cutting already for the table tops. Uh, what I haven't done, and we'll do this in the next video, is we will uh, get the frames together. And then I'm, I'm actually using, uh, I outsourced part of this, <laughs> I love that, um, I called in a favor with a friend uh, who has a, a really nice CNC router and so I'm having him uh, prep the wood portions of the top for me. Uh, we'll get this all assembled and that will probably be the third video in the series. I don't normally make videos in series like that, I, I try to keep my videos pretty concise for everybody. Um, but in this case, I wanted to get something out to you. It's a little bit of an update, uh, and frankly, um, it was going to take quite a bit of time to get this one done. So this one will be kind of a, an ongoing series as we're doing some other stuff. Uh, so sit back, and let's, uh, let's switch over to Fusion, and we'll look at the design that we're going to use for the frame and the overall design. And then uh, we'll, from there, we'll switch over to the plasma cutting and uh, give you an idea of what it's going to look like. So here we are in Fusion 360 and we're taking a look at our model of the coffee table. I just did a rough drawing on this one, played around a little bit with some of the, um, some of the rendering, but uh, this is the, uh, the table that I'm working on right now. Um, I tried to take into account some things that I've learned. I wanted to say uh, thank you to people like RJ and uh, uh, Chuck Kidwell. You guys have been, been quite helpful um, getting me to think about things more parametrically. Uh, what I mean by that is you don't have to sketch every little thing. You don't have to extrude every little thing. Make it so that it's, you know, use things like symmetry and setting things equal and, and parallel or things like that to simplify your design so that when you make a change, it propagates automatically. And so um, I started incorporating some of that. I didn't do everything. Let's, let's take the tabletop off for right now. Um, you can kind of see the tabletops there, but let's take that off for right now. And let's just focus on the frame first. Um, I did that for some parts, but not all of it. And as you can see in the bodies, there's body one is you know, the side, body two is this other side, right? And they're all one piece, basically. Um, they're going to be cut and welded. So I'm just curious. Uh, you know, I know I'm doing this for myself, but how would you do this uh, if you were actually going to farm this out uh, or you know, you're making the design for someone else? My suspicion is that you would actually make each one of these parts with that mitered cut or however you wanted to do that uh, as you know to indicate that there there are separate um, separate parts separate components here um, I didn't do that I did do it for like the cross pieces you can kind of see that each cross piece is separate um, but let's take a look at how I did it so excuse me let's turn the bodies off and let's look at sketches so the first sketch I did was that uh, side side view sketch that we looked at. Pretty straightforward. It's all three quarter inch uh, square tubing. So um, basically draw some lines. You can kind of see uh, where those dots are. That, that actually indicates that it, um, I have to zoom in a little bit. You might be able to see a little more. There's dimension lines in there, right? That was that's my point at which I did my mirroring. Okay, so basically. I just started drawing. I drew over, down, around, back, over, and then I added dimensions to it. Um, from there, uh, on the same drawing, I also did the parts that would become the, um, the cross beams. Uh, but uh, pretty straightforward. You know, you just go ahead, get this drawn, and then um, 
it. So here we were at the drawing, and as we move to the next stage here, we can check out the body is turned off. Right at this point in the timeline, if I rewind, I did my extrusion. Right, so here I actually extruded it. Um, I then made a copy and offset it the length that I needed. So here's you know, copy paste. I could move the timeline back if we really wanted to see how each part of it worked. Right. So there's my copy and whoops, I went too far. Sorry about that, folks. Copy. Next step, paste it. Right. Then I did another sketch. And at this point, I started working on the side beams. So you can see here, it's kind of highlighted. Um, those cross beams, the parts that we're going to connect to and provide that support. Basically, they were just three quarter inch squares, right? Nothing spectacular. Extrude those. Um, I could have extruded all three at once. I actually, in the process, I drew these two, extruded and went, oh, wait a minute. I'm going to need one at the top too. Went back to the drawing. So I backed up, went to the, the sketch drew the other, the third one in and, and added that in. So uh, pretty straightforward on that. The next part on this you know, is now I've got a tabletop. I added a new component. I'm, I'm getting better about you know, doing things as components and not um, I doing them as bodies and then converting it. I, uh, makes it a whole lot easier for assemblies. Uh, but next thing I did is I started to make the new component. Right, So you can see here that step was just the new component. Then I started working on sketches. And so let's turn the sketching on so you can see. Oops. Please. Possibly. Wow. It's because I'm recording. It's basically flipping me off. I activate the component. Then I should be able to turn this. It, it's just not letting me turn that sketch on. Oh, nice. Great. All right. Hover over it. You can see what I did. I wonder why it's doing that. That is so strange. Sketch one's there. Sketch. It is not letting me turn these sketches back on. That's awesome. All right. Well, looking from the top, basically what I did was I drew a dimension line right through the middle here. And what that let me do is do a snap. So effectively what I did was I did a rectangle. I did a center rectangle from that mid midpoint, right? Let me snap it, uh, drag it out, and then add the uh, dimensions to it. I don't know why. So you can see there it's working. I don't know why it's not letting me turn it back on for some reason. It's really weird. Show. All right. Maybe it, oh, because the tabletop itself is off. That's why. Uh, Pebcac user error on my part. Sorry, folks. Right. So dimension line center to your rectangle. The next part, sketch two, is basically just an offset. So half inch offset from that rectangle. So what you do is you actually project the rectangle to the to the um, sketch of the new plane. So let's let's bring this up a little bit so you can actually see. I'll turn the body on as well. All right. So the first plane where I did the rectangle was here. Projected it up and then did an offset. Right. From there, then I could do an extrude, which is actually uh, a cut. Right. And I came down the 3 sixteenths of an inch. So it's kind of hard to see from that angle. Um, but if we zoom in, maybe it'll let me do that. Uh, don't move that. I haven't done an assembly yet. You can see here ooh, that we've got the 3 sixteenths. Um, routed out part. Things that I haven't done yet uh, on this drawing, I do apologize. I'm, it's like almost two o'clock in the morning and I'm doing videos because it's the only time I had free. I, you know, I didn't mess around with things like I want the grain to go lengthwise. I need to get that kind of stuff uh, fixed and in place. But for right now, this worked because what it let me do is get all the 
general measurements in place here so that if we turn the tabletop off and we're looking at the frame. I'll activate the whole thing. We look at the frame. It lets me get to that next um, to that next step, which for me the next step was actually to calculate how much material I needed, go uh, get all that, and start cutting. Um, let's shift gears from here though, because I did have some of the material already on hand, and with that, that was done on the plasma cam. And so uh, let's take a look at what's actually going to go into this inlay. Now for the um, the tops, I'm sorry, for the, um, the end tables. Right. The end table frame design is exactly the same. Uh, proportions will be a little different. It'll be a little taller, narrower, longer, right? or not as long. But uh, you get the point. Um, so I didn't feel the need to uh, model that up in here. Uh, yeah, so that's enough babbling. Let's take a look at the plasma cutting. I will likely do most of that in fast forward to save you guys some time. All right, so here we are over on the plasma cam and uh, at 20 times speed so that it doesn't take all day for us to take a look at this. But uh, this is the inset we're gonna do for the, uh, the coffee table. And then um, we'll, <laughs> at 20 times speed, it goes real fast. Uh, it actually didn't take that long. The whole thing, uh, all three parts cut, I think was like 17 minutes total. So it really wasn't bad. Um, kind of a neat uh, little setup. I like my, my mountains and cabin uh, kind of look. And then I reused some of the uh, parts that you can kind of see. Uh, reuse that for the tables themselves so they all match. But uh, let's take a little bit closer look at those parts. All right. Let's turn some stuff off. Realize probably can't hear very well. Okay, there we go. So, working on some furniture. This will be part of a tabletop. Um, it'll be inlaid into a wooden top. Um, I have a metal frame, but it's a little too cold. I'm just doing it all out of metal, and uh, so. By having the, the mix with the wood should uh, <coughs> should work out pretty well, and so we've got the main coffee table and then the two end tables are matching. And actually, what it was is um, I did proportional sizing, but then I just used this little piece here and put it in the middle of the uh, tabletop there. Not so sure how well you can see it. I'll probably let me try zooming you in. We'll see if that looks any better. Let's see, zoom. Just, yes, yeah, so you can kind of see. But, you know, first step, after I get it on paper and get it out of my head, is to get some parts cut. So, got these cut. Um, we'll get them all cleaned up, get the dross off it. And next step is the fun part. It's just basically a frame, right? So. A lot of measure and cut and weld. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm working on this weekend. All right, so thanks for watching. I uh, will be back on this project shortly. Um, in the next video uh, on this project, we'll work on actually getting the parts for the frame cut, everything welded up, cleaned up, and ready for powder coat. Uh, so. Thank you again. Really appreciate all the uh, subscribers. I appreciate all of the um, the great comments that I've gotten. Um, you know, you guys are amazing, and uh, I wouldn't keep doing these videos if it if it weren't for uh, for the kind of feedback that I get from everyone. So thank you very much. Um, thanks again to a couple of people who have been uh, uh, working with me on some of the drawing stuff uh, lately. Uh, RJ, thank you. I do appreciate it, and. Uh, Chuck Kidwell, uh, you've given me some some good tips uh, over the last <laughs> last few months, actually. So uh, I really appreciate that. With that, let's uh, wrap it up. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're staying warm and staying dry. And uh, I will see you soon.